Hey there, welcome back. It's Brittany and today I'm going to be using some dress up buttons to make some jewelry. So the first, um, well, we're gonna make two different pieces. I'm going to use spirit animals to make a necklace and I am going to use Halloween donuts to make a bracelet. Um, I'm going to do this in a little bit of a choppy order just because there's some gluing that I want to get done before I move on to that project. So, um, we're gonna start with the Halloween spirit animals. I've already opened one pack. I need the flowers from two packs. And my necklace is going to include the little puppy dog who's super cute. They're both cute, the cat and the dog are adorable. But um, I've already glued a jump ring to the back of one of the dogs, just like that with some E6000. This glue is not going anywhere once it's on there. So I used the clear uh, E6000 and adhered a jump ring to the dog. You can cut off the shank as well. I probably will do that in a little bit. So it looks like a little bail on the back of my button. I am also going to cut the shanks off of these roses. You can use nail clippers, you can use scissors, you can use wire cutters, um, whatever you have available. It's pretty easy to get those off of there. Get those in the trash. And then I have four little filigrees, and I just took these out of my stash, but you can find these um, in craft stores or um, uh, beading websites. So it's just a piece of metal that has holes in it. And I already adhered four of the flowers to four of these filigrees. So here's what one side looks like. And I wanna make this two-sided. So my necklace, if the chain turns, um, will you'll be able to see a flower on both sides. I'm just gonna do red on the same piece and then pink, yellow, orange. Uh, I'm not gonna switch it up at all. I'm just gonna put a dab of the glue and plop the flower right in there and give that a good 10 to 15 minutes to dry before you start working with it. Overnight is probably the best, but um, yeah, the, the E6000 needs a little bit of time to cure. If you're not using a lot, like we're not using a lot here, 15 minutes should be good enough for you to start working with it. And then once you're finished with your piece, just give it overnight dry time. So we're creating a bead from two buttons and a filigree. I'm just gonna finish that with the other two. See how easy that is? And now these are ready for jewelry. Okay. So while those pieces dry, I am going to make a bracelet using our donut pack. So the donut pack comes with six really scrumptious looking donuts. Don't those look so yummy and they're calorie free. <laughs> um, I also have about two yards of, I think this is either one or one and a half millimeter leather. Uh, I don't think we'll need all two yards, but I am going to use two yards just in case. I'm gonna line up both ends and then I'm gonna fold it in half and come down to this end and I'm going to make a knot but I want to make sure our knot will slip around one of our donuts okay because we're going to use a donut as a clasp I mean this is going to be a very easy bracelet beginner knotter bracelet for you so I just want to make sure my whole my knot is right there we're just going to do an overhand knot pull our leather through and you can absolutely use any kind of knot you want here and you can also put a bead on there if you if you want like I said it's gonna be super easy today we're gonna make a knot going before I pull that really tight I'm gonna make sure my button will fit through and I can actually make it a little bit smaller pull that down just a little bit there we go get that button through there there we go, he went right through. All right, so I'm gonna put my buttons in a, the order that I already chose. So I, I like the black with orange, then the orange with purple, then yellow with black, then purple with yellow, then um, black with orange, or I'm sorry, purple with orange, and then black with orange. So 
Um, I don't know if we'll need the six button. If we do, I'll grab it and we'll be ready to go. So I am going to take my button and I will take one tip or one end of my leather and I'm going to go right through the middle of that donut and out the back. Okay. Okay. Just pull it all the way through like that. And then I'm going to take the other strand, bring it around the back of the donut, and I'm going to pull it through the donut out the front. Okay. Trying not to cross those as much as possible. So one's coming out the front and one is coming out the back. And then we're going to snug it up against our knot there. Okay. And then we're going to make another knot here. If you want, you can make a barrel knot. I'm just going to do another overhand knot throughout the rest of this bracelet. Okay, and then we're going to walk that knot down to our button and make sure it's snug right up against our button, just like that. So here's our button, here's our uh, old loop for our clasp, and then we're ready to do it again. We're going to do that um, four more times, depending on the length you'd like. For your bracelet so I'm going to take the next one and I don't really think it matters which one goes through the front which one comes out through the back um, I'm just gonna go with the flow We do want to make sure that the donuts are facing the same direction. We don't want um, our donuts flip flopping around on us. Okay. Move that as close to that knot as possible. There we go. And like I said, if you want a bead there, that's totally fine too. You don't have to put a knot. If you put a bead there, that would hold the, the donuts in place. And then we'll just do another knot. Walk that down to our donut. Okay, just like that. Isn't that cute? It's already turning into a sweet treat. And then we're gonna do it again. Like I said, this is super easy, but it's really cute. And you could do this with any donut button, any donut bead you might have the possibilities are endless. Okay, so we've got our third donut on there. I'll slide that down just a little bit more. There we go. Make our knot. This is definitely, I have a whole set of Halloween jewelry and this is definitely going to go into the rotation once uh, September or I'm sorry once the towards the end of September I just start breaking out the Halloween jewelry and that's all I wear for a month <laughs> it's so fun um, okay so then we'll use this one to go in the front of this donut and come around the back of this one. This is like a 10 minute, 10 minute um, quick project. Need a gift? Need something quirky for a friend? This will do it. You can make this on in the car on the way to your friend's house. <laughs> Look how cute that is. I love it. Definitely make it your own. You can use other um, other buttons, um, any shank style button will work too. Uh, you, you could tie that on just by putting two strands in between, um, two strands through the shank in between each donut button, whatever works for you. Okay, I'm trying to get this one a little bit closer to our donut here and it looks a little tangled. I don't know what happened with this one so we could just untie it. down a little bit there we go 
And I might need um, more than one pack of these buttons. I have a little bit larger wrist, but that means more Halloweeny goodness. be a really cute way to do a little um, zipper pull or uh, backpack keychain too. Just do a couple donuts or one donut and some beads. Okay, I think I need um, two more donuts. We're just going to end the bracelet just like we started it. We're not going to create a loop. We're just going to create a knot. And I'm going to walk that down to my donut. And then I am going to grab some GS Hypo cement and dab a little bit on oh and we always it always leaks we'll dab a little bit on my knot here so it doesn't go anywhere stab it all around that little knot now you're not going to be able to see it it dries clear and i am just going to you can put a little bead on the end of your your um leather i'm not going to do that i'm just going to tie a knot on the end of each piece and then i'll put it down to where i want it to be on the end of my little tail here i'm going to just create a little tail and cut it off just an inch or two from the end of the bracelet. There we go. There we go. There we go. And then I'll just snip, snip. And our bracelet is finished isn't that super cute oh my gosh it's so cute and I bet you your friends are like where did you get a Halloween donut bracelet so then that's this is why we wanted to make sure that the donut would fit through the loop because it became its own little closure isn't that super cute I just love it I love it it's so cute it's so quirky perfect for Halloween um, and you could do this with any type of donut okay so I'm going to set that aside for a moment and then we're going to come back to our um, pieces. So this one's a little, uh, it's dry to the touch, but it's still tacky. Um, the glue is still tacky. And uh, so he'll need a little bit of um, more dry time, but I can still manipulate it into the, um, the places that I need it to go. So I'm going to leave it sitting like that for a moment. Um, from my stash, I also grabbed a, um, an acrylic flower that has, uh, it's like a connector, um, and a pendant that I thought was really re reminiscent of the style of these buttons. And I'm going to create like a Halloweeny or um, even a Day of the Dead necklace. So the reason why I have the um, jump ring attached to the top of my 
my dog is I'm going to take two smaller jump rings and attach it to the bottom of this heart. I'm gonna set that off to the side. We're gonna do that last. I'm gonna take a jump ring and I'm going to attach it to my flower. And then attach it to my pendant. Just like that. Okay, and then I am going to lay out the design of my necklace and um, we'll kind of go from there. Those are the relative direction I'd like to go with the colors. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit. I have some turquoise color beads from my stash and some gunmetal color eye pins. And we're gonna make a few links so we can link everything together. And I also have some gunmetal chain that's going to bring a look together. Okay. So to create a link, or I'm going I'm just gonna take one of my eye pins, put it through my bead, create a 90 degree angle, and then snip. Take my round nose pliers and do a simple loop by bending it back towards the bead. Okay, and we have our link. I'm gonna do that several times for these beads here. Okay, so I have eight uh, little melon beads uh, with that are turned into links. And like I said, I have some gunmetal chain and I'm also bringing out some more gunmetal colored um, jump rings. I need to put one through my flower and then one will act, act as the link to um, the rest of the necklace. So I'm going to use a little bit smaller one to put through our flower. like we did to connect the heart below. And then I am going to put my larger jump ring on there. So our pendant falls like that. And I'm gonna close this jump ring up a little bit more. So nothing escapes. Once our little puppy dog is dry, I'm gonna put him down here. It's gonna be so cute. And uh, use the turquoise to tie in the blue of the, the, the flowers and his ears, so adorable. All right, so I'm gonna cut um, four two inch sections of my chain. All right. So I'm just gonna open my link take off my two inches and I am going to do that three more times. Okay, I put the rest of the chain off to the side to use on the back of the necklace. Um, I'm going to uh, take my chain and attach it to my jump ring down by my rose. Do that for two different pieces. And then I'll connect both of my links to the end of this, and then I'll get some jump rings to connect to my flowers.
Okay. All right, so I have a smaller jump ring. And then it doesn't matter which side you connect to because we made it double-sided. So this can turn around and you're not readjusting your necklace um, if the back side shows because there is no true back side here. I love it. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that for the rest of the links, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to take these two jump rings and attach my little cute skeleton dog to the bottom of my pendant. Another thing you could do is you could um, cut the shank off the back of the dog if you have another filigree kind of like these and then just glue the dog to the filigree. That'd be super cute too. These would be great pieces in um, assemblage jewelry. Um, I think they kind of give you just so much to work with and you could do so many different things with the same set of buttons. Okay, and there's our little dog hanging from our heart pendant. Super cute. Oh my gosh, it makes me so happy. And it's a custom piece for every that I can bust out at any time of the year, but I think it looks fantastic for um, Halloween and Day of the Dead. All right, so I have some gunmetal chain left over. I'm going to finish off the back and then our necklace will be finished. The rest of my chain already had um, a, uh, a lobster clasp on it, so I'm just going to um, this is the amount that I wanted on my necklace. I'm going to clasp it at one side and then find the middle. Take that off, put it on one side of my necklace. Attach the other side to the other connector. And we have a fun and brightly colored, adorable necklace. I just love this and I'm absolutely going to wear it throughout the year, but certainly in October. Isn't that super cute? I just love it. And um, I just love the pops of color that these um, spirit am animal uh, buttons really bring to the table. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Dress It Up Buttons again for sending me these adorable buttons and allowing them to me to use them in my jewelry creations. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the tutorials and I hope you're going to have fun creating with the new Halloween line.